Hey everyone, my name is Brian and welcome to my shop. So if you're new to my channel, uh, go ahead and tell you that we are in the process of building two supercars. You'll notice I say in the process and I'm not saying trying because I am gonna make two supercars. So uh, if, you, if you followed along at all, you'll know that the first go around, this is my second attempt at it. The first go around, I made the uh, this frame rail here and it's actually at the wrong height. I did some wrong calculations. Well, good news. I'm actually Brian from the future and I've got those calculations done correctly and I've actually already got the frame rails and they are sitting over there. So now I've got to do is get this video kind of tidied up and pushed out the door so I can go ahead and start recording the next part of it. So let's, without uh, further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first car is going to be built with this, this Illuminator XS. This is a crate motor I got from Ford Performance Group. It's based on the Coyote block, but they've actually gone through and actually replaced all the innards with a lot more high performance stuff. Right now it doesn't have a supercharger on it, but I do plan on installing one before I actually put it in the car. I'm hoping to get about a thousand wheel horsepower. So now let's take a look at car number two. So the power plant for car number two is gonna be this Tesla Model S motor. We actually are gonna mate it to some bolt batteries and the ECU is gonna be a custom job that is currently under R&D. But somehow we're gonna to have to get this on the road. So let's take a look at the suspension components. So for suspension now, we're have to harvest it off this Corvette. This happens to be a C7 Corvette. Uh, unfortunately, it is a total car, but all I really need to, is off this car anyway is these suspension points. I can't actually get them from GM. They won't sell them to you. You actually uh, you have to be a partner and unfortunately I'm just not qualified to be a partner. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is take these suspension points and make a jig and then I'll attach it to. Okay, so we're gonna attach that suspension to a custom frame. This is actually a failed custom frame. Unfortunately, I did not get the right height. This is actually a failed jig that we made or I made. Um, so what happened was, uh, Everything was based off this jig, and so all those touch points uh, on this frame were actually spaced for that jig, and really it's not going to work because I actually have to completely recalculate this ride height. Um, but you might ask yourself, okay, so what's the car going to look like? Well, let me show you. The car is going to look similar to this. We're going to take some styling cues from this car, as well as a Bratham uh, BT62. Uh, unfortunately, we don't really have a, a real design just yet. We actually have to get the frame completely done before we can actually put a skin on it to understand exactly what the car is going to look like. So we're going to start working on the frame, but before we do that, we actually have to do some calculations. What size tire do we need to get the right radius for the or the right ratio to make sure we're not turning too many RPMs for the Illuminator XS motor? Okay, so you think step one would actually be to set the ride height. It's basically, stack this up and get your suspension points. Well. I would, I, it's what I did the first time and I was actually wrong because the problem is this transmission. This transmission I was told came out of a Lamborghini Gallardo. I don't know that for 100% fact. This transmission was used in the Audi R8. It was also used in the Ferrari. So the problem is I really don't know what the gear ratio is. On top of that, there's actually uh, a little bit different in this transmission than other transmissions. Normally you have gears one through six and then you have a standard differential like you do in a Porsche box. This box is actually a four-wheel drive box and it actually has what's called a drop gear. So it has another gear in here which actually changes the ratio of gears one through six. Um, so right now I have really no clue. I mean, I've got an idea um, based on the internet, but I really don't have a clue as to what the, exact, um, what the exact ratios are. And I really need to know what the ratios are because that'll determine my RPMs as I'm going down the road. The ideal is obviously this, this Ford motor here. We want to turn about 2,500 RPM and going around 70 miles, miles an hour. That would be kind of an ideal, but we're not really sure what it is yet. So ultimately that means the tire size could be anywhere from a 25 to, I don't know, maybe 29. I'm not exactly sure just yet. So the first thing we're going to do is crack open this box and see what's inside. I don't care what they 
Okay, so I was able to successfully dismantle this transmission. Unfortunately, I don't have all the footage. Or, and somebody forgot to actually turn the camera back on again when we got back. So, not naming any names, but unfortunately we just don't have that footage. But let's go through what we do have, um, as far as now that we got the transmission apart, what we're going to do next to actually figure out the rolling radius of the tires and actually see if we're going to change any of these gearings that are currently in the transmission. All right, so this is basically your standard transmission stack. It's going to be, you know, one through six. Um, basically, what I need to do is count the teeth on both sides and figure out the gear ratio. There's a number of gear ratios on the internet for this transmission, the uh, Lamborghini Gallardo. So it's a bit confusing as to what is actually the right number. Um, there's even on some forums saying that, you know, Lamborghini had uh, uh, included the drop gear and sometimes they didn't include the drop gear. And we'll talk about the drop gear here right in a second. So what happens is you've got your input shaft and your output shaft. The output shaft would normally go to like an axle in a standard car, like in a standard American car, and that would connect to your ring and pinion gear. So it's like that. In this transmission, however, it actually goes through one additional set of gearing. It's called a drop gear or transition gear, and that actually changes the whole gear ratio of the system. Um, the advantage of that is you can make one gear change and effectively get a whole new uh, pattern. The disadvantage of it is that you actually have to take everything apart to actually get to it. So it's kind of a pain. Um, but what we're going to do here is most likely end up changing this drop gear, uh, primarily because this came out of uh, a V10. Pretty sure it came out of a V10. Once we run the numbers, when I did some of the calculations of, uh, of these gears just off the top of my head, it looks like that this is going to be a V10 transmission, which means that this is really set up for a much higher revving uh, engine versus the V8 that I plan on running. So I'm probably going to have to change this to effectively change my gear ratios. But uh, well, let's go ahead and go to the computer and start actually putting all those numbers in and see what the gear ratios look like, which is ultimately going to lead us to be able to figure out what the rolling radius of the tire should be. So I calculated all the teeth and I've got my gear ratios here. So let's kind of go through them and take a look at see what our RPMs are for any given uh, speed. So my first gear is 2.56. My second gear, my second gear is 1.85. My third gear is 1.42. Fourth is 1.114. Four, sorry about that. And fifth is 0.94. Six is 0.81. Okay, so now it gets a little. This is where it gets confusing. So if you actually count the teeth, the uh, rack and pin, or the uh, pinion in uh, gear is 3.08. Um, but you have to take into consideration the drop gear or the transition gear. So I could either multiply the, the uh, ring and pinion gear or I could multiply the gear ratios themselves. So we're going to go ahead and multiply the uh, ring and pinion gear just for simplicity. So that's going to be uh, 1.24. So that makes this now a th uh, 3.82. Okay, and if we use the original tire height uh, off the Corvette, which is a 25 inches, and we put in a RPM, let's say, of... Uh, 2,500 RPM. We'll see that we're only going about 60 miles an hour uh, just cruising down the highway. So if we change that to say 3,000 RPM, we see we're going about 72. So it, you know, at highway cruising speed, you're turning 3,000 RPM, which is which is pretty high. So I really don't want to I don't want to have that kind of calculate or that kind of uh, RPM at that kind of uh, speed. So what I'm going to do is actually change that drop gear. And if I take um, and look online, there's a place that I was able to source drop gears for the Gallardo, and that makes the new drop gear uh, come down to come down to 0 0.04. It, right now it's a 1.24, and it drops it down to 1.04. I think I said that wrong the first time. But anyway, so let's do the calculation on that. So that's going to change this 382 to a change that let's see we take uh, 3.08 times 1.04 that's uh, gonna be a 320 that's what that'll end up being so now if we apply the same ratios there you can see that our 3000 rpm is actually doing 86 so let's uh, actually take that to 2500 
and now we're turning 2500 rpm and going 70 miles an hour so that's not bad but um i'd actually like it a little bit lower uh, and the way i can achieve that is changing the tire height so i'm gonna go to a 28 inch tire and now we can change this instead if uh it breaks to 80 miles an hour at 2500 rpm so let's try 2200 rpm uh that's a 70 miles an hour so 2000 rpm during 70 miles an hour which is good and this this gear ratio should give me some pretty good off the line acceleration as well one thing to note also is the uh, Tesla tires are also 28 inches, so we should be able to maintain uh, the gear ratio, which is a 9 to 1, I believe, in the Tesla, which uh, with this 28 inch tire. So if I go online and look for some 28 inch tires, which I've actually already done, uh, and then what I'm actually going to end up using a 345 20, I'm sorry, 345 30 R20 tire, uh, some Michelin's I was able to source. So it's going to be some pretty big rubber on the back of this car. So, so what we need to do first is before those tires in, in rim. I actually ordered some rims to get here. We're going to go ahead and get the car at the right ride height so we can order the frame rails. So to do that, I'm going to create some uh, wood blanks that are 28 inches high uh, and we'll be able to put those on the car and then do some uh, frame rail calculations. So let's go ahead and jump back to that now. Okay, so now we know for a fact that we're going to use 345 30 R20 tires. Again, those have a rolling radius of 28.1. So what I need to do to get the suspension in the right or position is basically create some uh, fake tires. I'm going to do that out of plywood. I'm going to cut out a 28.1 rolling radius or, or diameter tire. Then I'll bolt that on, which is obviously going to lift this up, which will then allow us to set this position and do some other additional calculations. I've got a tool in here that we actually have to run to know the right angle, the originally factory angle, and that will then allow us to create the jig. So. We uh, slowly but surely are making progress here. So what I've done is taken some plywood and just uh, cut up some 28 inch tires just so I can actually get the car to the right ride height. I've actually ordered the tires and the rims I'm going to use for this particular project. They just haven't arrived yet. So, um, and I do want to get these frame rails ordered here so I can go ahead and get these thing, uh, get the car into like a rolling form uh, sooner than later. So what I've done is, like I said, cut out these tires, get the, get the car set up. Um, after doing some research and stuff, basically I'm also going to use this tool. Uh, it's called a Kent Moore model number J26, no, J2854. And what this is, is a tool that allows you to uh, properly set the ride height for a Corvette. Um, these tools are cheap, they're on eBay for like a hundred bucks, um, but it's also it's going to be a lot simpler to do. I, originally, I don't know if you saw the original video, but I was using a laser line and just trying to use a tape measure that was a little complicated. So all I actually have to do is, according to the service manual, is, uh, so you can see this page right here, is we need 86 millimeters. So what I do is I, uh, unlike how you do it on the Corvette, uh, if you've got a real one, you, you basically measure it and, and kind of readjust it. I actually need to set this to the 86 millimeter mark. And once I do that, I go and put it in its correct position. All right, so I apologize, it's gonna be a little difficult to capture the actual level bubble itself. It's uh, this item right uh, there. And what you basically are doing is, or what I'm doing basically, is I'm going to raise or lower the car, or raise or lower this jack, until the suspension points are level. Right there. So obviously you can't see that, I apologize. Let me see if I can get in there a little bit better. Let's see if we can see the bubble. I don't think it's going to focus. Okay, so anyway. All right, so now we know the suspension is in the original specification, uh, according to GM. So, uh, now all we have to do is make sure the frame itself is level. And it's a little getting close. To do adjust that, I've just got one jack in the front there. And then once I get this whole thing leveled up, we'll know that those these points, these uh, suspension geometry points, are in 3D space where they are originally intended to be. All right, so according to the tape measure, we need a 19 inch drop. 
between the lowest point of our, our frame here and the upper frame rail or where the suspension bolts are going to actually bolt to. It's actually a little higher, obviously, so we have some, some clearances there. Um, that 19 inches, as you probably see, I just kind of looking at it by eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be perfect, and the reason for that is because this actually uh, has these, these bolt points I haven't actually put onto any of the, the metal itself yet, and there's plenty of room for me to allow it to go up or down uh, if I need to on that. So what I'm going to do next is get this drawn up real quick uh, with this 19 inch drop, this uh, 45 degree angle here, and get that over to the bender, the uh, frame uh, manufacturing company. And they'll send me those, those parts and we can kind of continue on the build from there. So that should be a good spot to wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm open to suggestions. Uh, as I've said, I'm kind of a one man person here trying to figure this all out. So any help is greatly appreciated. Uh, if you haven't already, can please consider subscribing and uh, might want to hit that notification bell as well. Uh, as I've said before, I'm on Instagram. I do a little bit more uh, posting there. It takes me some time to actually get these videos put out, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching and stay tuned for this rest of the series. Thanks and have a nice day.